Hello and welcome to this video for today whether you're here for the first time or you're returning hope you will enjoy Hey there guys getting into part 4 now of our D&D Adventures in the Forgotten Realms set review this is colourless and multicolour stuff there's not much colourless stuff to talk about but there's a little fair bit of uh, multicolored stuff that i want to talk about so we better get right into it uh first off is hand vector and eye vector i want to talk about these uh together basically because i think they really need to go together for the most part i'm going to talk and say what i think about each one more individually but i'm gonna have them both up here in the same slot essentially so i have vecna two mana enchantment a legendary enchantment when it enters the battlefield you draw a card you lose two life you know again i don't think that it's exclusively that you absolutely have to play this in the vecna deck but i think you really want to play it in the vecna deck but maybe there's some like mono white decks that might want this uh, artifact does draw your card especially like the new oswald he might want this uh but at the beginning of your upkeep you may pay two mana if you do this too light so again just it's fairly good and it can offer those decks that do struggle with card draw and card advantage some card draw and card advantage you do have to lose two life but that is a very small downside. Maybe some colorless decks even want this just because it helps you uh, draw more cards and there's not that many. Do it for free value for the most part. It is when it enters. So maybe there's some ways that you can flicker it and whatnot. But for the most part, I think just that free one uh, when you first play it is pretty good for the most Draw one for two, not great, but still it is colors, so it's just fine. And then the beginning of your draw, uh, upkeep, you can pay two mana to draw a card. Isn't too bad, like it's bad for Rexian Arena. But again, in the colors that struggle with card draw, I think it's just fine. So yeah, I think, you know, again, along with Hand of Vector, you can see play. Uh, and Hand of Vector is three mana equipment. Uh, legendary artifact at the beginning of your combat on your turn creep creature get uh or creature you control named vecna gets plus x plus x until end of turn where x is the number of cards in your hand and you can equip for two or equip with paying one life for each card in your hand so the creature can get quite big again the eye of vecna can help you draw more cards and whatnot um you know, Book of Vile Darkness that we were talking about in our vision. You know, when you lose life, you make a 2 2 and whatnot. So, those are all good effects for the most part, you know. So, you know, you do have to choose between the creature that's equipped to or vector. Um, you know, so, but if it's equipped to vector, it's of course like, I don't know how you could equip it to vector, but maybe you could like in standard or modern or pioneer or whatever. But again, like if there were ways, there might be ways that you can do it. You can put things from your exile into your graveyard. So then if you can return Hand of Vecna somehow, you might be able to equip the Hand of Vecna onto Vecna. And then you basically to get two Hand of Vecna effects um, in that way because you've got a quote-unquote Hand of Vecna effect on the token and then you've got another copy of hand of vector that's equipped to it or that's on the battlefield so yeah you get two effects off of that maybe some equipment decks you know maybe would want it again some utility to say that it just doesn't go in with the other things but i really think you would want to run them all together to get the maximum effect out of it so certainly there are some mono white or boros decks or law hold or whatever red white decks that might want it mardu decks again that might want it like that are equipment based but again i would think that they all want to go together for the most part i still think that they're quite interesting and could see some play in uh, certain decks as well but yeah i certainly think that you want to care about equipment with that one but you want to care about just generic free like value for the most part with the first one there uh, i vecna and with the book of vile darkness yeah it's just more free value so if you have all three out 
even if you're not going to exile the Book of Vile Darkness and get Vector out, I think the effects are all pretty good together if you don't get rid of them. And then when you get Vector the 8-8, the effects are even better because, you know, now it's on an 8-8 body, it still gets got. But again, I still think that there's, you know, ways you can play around it. But we'll move on now to uh, the multicolored spells. And uh, there is a few more, not a lot, but still a few more that I want to talk about. First off is Bard class, a Gruul class enchantment. And I just realized most of these are classes, actually, but there you go. They're all all right for the most part. Uh, when uh, you get the first one, legendary creatures you control into the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on them. Hey, you know what? We're playing Commander. You know what you have in your command zone? A legendary creature. So it's going to come into the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it, which is pretty good. You know, again, some voltron style commanders might care about that. But again, it's just fine for the most part. It does do something. Then when you get to level two, which you play another red and green for, you get legendary uh, spells you cast cost red and green less to cast it doesn't only reduce the amount of colored mana you have to pay but still like reducing your colored mana of you know your legendaries so of course with this one you really want to be led heavy legendaries in gruel colors at least and there are some you know gruel legend decks or you know four color three color five color certainly legend decks um, that this could go in, so I think that that reducing cost can be quite good. Then when you get to level 3, which is 3 and uh, red to green, whenever you cast a legendary spell, you exile the top two cards of your library, and you may play them this turn. So it's essentially, quote-unquote, draw two, um, but you can only play them this turn. So that's pretty good too. All these effects are just fine. Like, the first one isn't the best, but it's okay, again. Reducing your spells cost if you have a lot of gruel pipped um, cards or even red and then a green card like again reducing their cost is still pretty good so that's all right if you have other reducing effects it's good too um, you know you can suddenly cast like the f double Woburg double uh, Woburg Woburg commander or whatnot if you have Morophon out for you know black red and blue um when you get to this level things like that that can be really good again so you know if your legendary matters i would think about running this one next one is the fighter class uh when it, it uh, for a red and a white when it enters the battlefield you search the library for equipment card reveal it put it in your hand then shovel a two mana equipment tutor is fairly playable at sorcery speed you know even like a three mana tutor is somewhat playable in uh, some of these decks but then you get all of this other upside which is really good um, so for three mana you get equip abilities of uh, equipment you control cost two less to activate so that's for one and double and a white and a red you know that's really good like um Ah, what's his name from Ikoria, the companion, the red-white one? I can't remember his name, but he basically does a very similar effect to this, where you reduce ability costs. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, that does get your equipment down. A lot of the equipment that you would want to equip for three is now equipped for one. Uh, a lot of the equipment that you want to equip for two are now equipped for zero which is really good and even some of the ones that are equipped for one are now zero which is really good and then the third one for three and a red and a white whenever a creature you control attacks up up to one target creature blocks at this combat if able so you know that's weird removal maybe kind of um to a degree um, so that can be okay, but I think the first two things on this one are where it's at. You want that last one if you really, really need it. But again, just like the first two things are worth it, 
So I would think that if you're in a red and white deck um, or some variant of red and white decks that care about equipment, that you would want to think about running this, even if the third thing isn't that great. Just the first two things are really quite good, and if you get to the third thing, you get some weird like removal, so that's okay as well. It eventually will get to the point where it's like, oh yeah, sure, I'll I'll pay for that, and I'll want to kill this this thing that my opponent has because I don't want them to adapt with it. Next, skeletal swarming, uh, three and black green. So enchantment. Each skeleton you control has trample and attacks each combat if able. It gets plus X plus O, where X is the number of other skeletons you control. At the beginning of your round step, you create a 1-1, one, one, uh, tapped 1-1 one, one skeleton. And if a creature died this turn, create two of those tokens instead. You know, strictly a skeleton tribal card uh, for the most part. You know, skeleton tribal probably would take it as well because there's not that many great skeleton tribal cards. But there's not none this is an okay one again we were talking about another skeleton card in our black section um so you know getting one skeleton each uh in step you know it sort of does something quote unquote right away again it when you cast it on your second main phase then go right to your end step or this is the last thing you cast in your second main or whatever then go to your end step, you get that 1-1, one, one. yeah, 1-1 one, one for 5 isn't great. When you, or if something died this turn, though, you get 2 of them. So 2 one ones for 5, still not great. But again, it keeps scaling up. Yeah, sure, they have to attack, you know, each combat. But if they die, you get 2 more. So it just sort of keeps refueling itself. So it doesn't really matter that they die. And you're going to have other effects in this deck that sort of care about you know, things dying or going to the graveyard or recursion and whatnot so that then you can actually, like, take advantage of, like, things dying or you cr just creating this free fodder, essentially. So I think it's quite good in some of those decks. Maybe it could see play in some other decks that really want to be aristocratic and you can just take advantage of the bodies, but mostly I think you want to be skeleton tribal for the most part. Um, yeah. But anyway, next one, uh, Road Class. And I actually just realized all of these are enchantments. It was weird. Um, anyway, Demir enchantment, so blue and a uh, black. Uh, first thing you get, whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of that player's library face down. You may look at the card for as long as it remains exiled. You know, that's just okay. It's just fine. Kind of milling them in a way. Then for three, creatures you control have Menace, just fine as well. Not amazing, but just fine. You know, again, like if you're an invasive deck, just fine. For But third level, for two and blue-black, uh, you may play cards, exile with rogues class, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast those spells. Now this is where I think this uh, card becomes good. Sure, exiling cards from an opponent's library, yeah, that's okay if you're on that meal plan, maybe. If you've got evasive creatures again, you can make your creatures more evasive, uh, whatnot, that sort of thing. So, yeah, those two things are okay, but not great. But once you can get to play people's cards, that's where I think, again, it's at. If you're in a deck that wants to seal people's stuff and you have a few evasive creatures... Getting free value out of something like this is quite good, and I think you would think about running it in some of those decks that do care about, like, stealing opponent's stuff and whatnot. So, yeah, I would definitely consider this in some of those decks. Next one. And, uh, and this one's actually the last one. Sorcerer Class. This is an is it one, so a blue and a red. When it enters the battlefield, you draw two cards, then discard two cards. You know that looting effect, that's just fine. Not amazing, but for two mana, you get rid of your two worst cards and you get two, you know, cards from your deck. You know, if you know what's in the top of your deck, it can help out a little bit as well. So that's okay. For two more is it mana, or for blue and a green, you get to level two. Creatures you control have tap to add a blue or a red. 
Spend this mana only to cast instant or sorceries or gain another class level. So, sure, that's just fine as well. You can help, you can tap your creatures to help get to level 3 or whatever, or if you have an instant or sorcery based deck, you know, again, that can be really useful to help you cast your instant and sorceries. Um, having your creatures be able to tap for mana, essentially, making all your creatures into mana dogs. You can suddenly turn your Goblin Electromancer or your, um, what's the basic, the mono blue version of Goblin Electromancer that's also a legendary, I can't remember his name. But again, you can basically turn them into very powerful mana dorks and whatnot, reducing your spells by one and also tapping for a mana. That seems quite good. Um, then when you get to five mana, three and a blue and a red, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, uh, that spell deals damage equal to uh, um, its. Oh wait, it deals damage to each opponent equal to the number of instant sorcery spells you cast this turn. Sorry, I thought it dealt damage equal to this converted mana cost. So you basically get this grape shot style effect on this enchantment or Thousand Year Storm, kind of to a degree. No, actually, Thousand Year Storm copies them, doesn't it? Uh, whatever it is, Sentinel Tower, Sentinel Tower style effect on this uh, enchantment. Plus it does all this other stuff for you. Yeah, sure, the draw to discard to isn't great, but again, it's filtering for some of these decks and whatnot. And then you get the upside of, you know, being able to tap your creatures for mana or get to the next class, whatever. Eventually you will get to that third level and you will get that Sentinel Tower ability essentially. So yeah, I would think about this if you're a spell deck because it can be just a win condition eventually when you get up to that high level of mana. So yeah, I would definitely think about it if you're a spell deck. But again, that is pretty much it for the multicolored stuff and that's pretty much it for our review of the set. I'll be doing pre-con uh, deck upgrades very soon uh, here on the channel. Keep an eye out for those. But, you know, tell me what you think about uh, these cards. Write your thoughts down there in the comments below. If you would like to further support the channel, you can go onto our Patreon. You can also get social with us on our Facebook. To follow all the updates, make sure you hit the like button. And on our Discord, to get into it, please leave a comment and I'll send you an invite. All links are in the description. I hope you have enjoyed this video here today. And if you have, please consider liking, sharing and subscribing. And I hope you will come back for another one. See you then.